U.S. Secretary of State to visit China next week. Millions of Chinese troops needed in Putin's war, Russian TV host says. South Korea, China spat over envoy's comment on U.S. ties. Monkeypox virus reappears in Beijing. In a significant diplomatic move, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to embark on a long-delayed trip to China next week to ease tensions and foster dialogue between the two global powers. Reuters reported that Blinken is expected to be in China on June 18th. The visit was initially scheduled for February, but postponed due to a Chinese spy balloon incident amidst growing concerns about the Chinese regime's aggressive behavior and human rights abuses. President Joe Biden has emphasized the need for a thaw in relations with the Chinese regime, recognizing the importance of stable and constructive engagement between the world's two largest economies. This visit is viewed as a crucial step towards achieving that goal, signaling the Biden administration's commitment to addressing the mounting challenges the Chinese regime poses. The decision to reschedule the trip follows a recent report by the Wall Street Journal which exposed a secret agreement between China and Cuba to establish an electronic eavesdropping facility near the U.S. coast. These revelations have further heightened concerns about China's intentions and potential to exploit such facilities for espionage. The White House confirmed on June 10th that there are Chinese spy facilities in Cuba, claiming they have been there since at least 2019, and that Beijing is still pushing to expand them and upgrade its intelligence-gathering capabilities. Despite mounting concerns over the Chinese regime's aggressive military activities in the South China Sea, its dismal human rights record, technology competition, and its claim on Taiwan, the Biden administration has remained steadfast in its efforts to enhance engagement with the Chinese regime. However, critics have raised doubts about the U.S.'s approach, contending that decades of diplomatic outreach have proven ineffective in changing Beijing's behavior. Russian state media TV host Olga Skabayeva recently said millions of Chinese soldiers are needed to participate in Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine as Kiev prepares its long-awaited counteroffensive. As reported by Newsweek on June 11th, amid Ukraine's most recent effort to reclaim occupied land, Skabayeva, host of the Russian TV program 60 Minutes, suggested one solution to strengthen the Russian military. In a recent episode of the show, she strongly suggested that millions of Chinese soldiers join the conflict in Russia and Ukraine. Skabayeva cited the recent clashes in the Belgorod region of Russia, where Putin's forces are said to have had difficulty in recent weeks, as evidence that Moscow needs more troops. She said, Don't dismiss two or three million Chinese soldiers. That's what is needed now. I look at the Belgorod region and think how much we lack a Chinese People's Liberation Army. A video of Skabayeva's statement was translated and posted to Twitter by Anton Gerashenko, an advisor to Ukraine's Minister of Internal Affairs, on June 11 morning. Despite Skabayeva's request, China has not clarified that it intends to send troops into Russia, which would be seen as a significant escalation of the conflict. Instead, China is providing help in other ways. Still, Beijing and Moscow have deepened their relations since the start of the conflict. In April, Putin and Chinese Defense Minister Li Xiangfu emphasized military cooperation between the two nations during a meeting in Moscow, noting that they have engaged in joint military exercises, including ground, naval, and air force drills. Putin said, We are working actively through our military departments, regularly exchanging useful information, working together in the field of military technical cooperation and holding joint exercises. Skabayeva's request has triggered a lot of debates among netizens. One nicknamed Don P commented, China wouldn't even sell Russia drones, yet Russia thinks they will send millions of troops? Just shows how desperate Russia is. They are no longer even thinking they can win. Instead, they are hoping the US elections or China can save them. Another called Connie Nickel reckoned, China is going to need its troops for other wars it wants to start. If China would get involved, the outrage would be worldwide, and other countries would come to Ukraine's defense. Then we would have World War III on our hands. 
Nadezhin Linda joked, Sounds like Russians are calling for China to come save and occupy them. Why deny Russia that gift? South Korea and China are summoning each other's ambassadors after the Chinese side criticized South Korea for its ties with the U.S. at a high-profile meeting. Chinese ambassador to South Korea, Xin Haiming, on June 8th, said that South Korea should fend off outside interference when he talked about the country's relationship with China's rival country. As quoted by the South China Morning Post, he warned, At a time when the United States makes an all-out effort to strangle China, some people are betting on the United States emerging as the victor, and China the loser. But what I can say for sure is that those who bet that China will lose out to the United States will certainly regret it later. Singh was speaking at a meeting at the Chinese embassy, attended by liberal opposition party leader Li Jiemyung, widely known for his rivalry with conservative president Yoon suk yeol The threats prompted South Korea to call in the ambassador the next day. Its first vice foreign minister, Chang Ho-jin, who summoned Singh, criticized his remarks as a violation of diplomatic etiquette that could be seen as an interference in domestic matters. The criticism was also joined by Foreign Minister Park Jin, who said, There are diplomatic norms, and the role of an ambassador is to enhance friendship, not to spread misunderstanding. China, which is South Korea's top trading partner, responded to the condemnation with anger. According to Reuters, Beijing, on June 10th, summoned South Korea's envoy to issue a protest. Reportedly, China's assistant foreign minister, Nong Rong, said what its neighbor did regarding the comments by Xing was an improper reaction. While the Wuhan pneumonia pandemic is still raging in China, on June 7th, the Beijing CDC announced the appearance of two monkeypox cases in Beijing. These patients are currently isolated and being treated at designated hospitals. It's worth noting that the Beijing CDC did not specifically mention in the announcement what measures will be taken to prevent the spread of the virus. In September last year, Chongqing City discovered the first case of monkeypox in China. However, details about the patient were not disclosed at the time. The topic, two monkeypox cases detected in Beijing, on Weibo, attracted special attention from the public. Netizens commented, I just want to be at peace for a few days, but it doesn't seem to be possible. The symptoms of monkeypox are the same as smallpox. The mortality rate can be as high as 10% and it can leave disfiguring scars like smallpox after healing. This is worse than COVID-19. It's too difficult to live. According to WHO, monkeypox is an infectious disease caused by the monkeypox virus. It can cause a painful rash, enlarged lymph nodes, and fever. Most people fully recover, but some get very sick. Anyone can get monkeypox. It spreads from contact with infected persons, animals, and materials. The monkeypox virus was discovered in Denmark in 1958 in monkeys kept for research, and the first reported human case of monkeypox was a nine-month-old boy in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 1970. Monkeypox causes signs and symptoms which usually begin within a week but can start 1 to 21 days after exposure. Symptoms typically last two to four weeks, but may last longer in someone with a weakened immune system. Monkeypox's typical symptoms are rash, fever, sore throat, headache, muscle aches, back pain, low energy, and swollen lymph nodes. The rash begins as a flat sore that develops into a liquid blister and may be itchy or painful. As the rash heals, the lesions dry up, crust over, and fall off. At this point, the infected person is no longer contagious, but it can leave scars for several years. Some patients may develop complications, including infection, bronchopneumonia, encephalitis, corneal infection, sepsis, and more. According to the Beijing CDC, monkeypox cases have been detected in 111 countries and regions worldwide, and person-to-person -person transmission is mainly among men who have sex with men. Currently, there is no specific medicine to treat the monkeypox virus in China, mainly symptomatic support and treatment of complications, and there is no vaccine to prevent the disease.